Welcome to Cubs Classics, proudly presented by Prevagen. You're watching game 163 of the 1998 season, the wild card playoff between the Giants and the Cubs. Let's relive it together. The defense for the Cubs, they've made a change. Henry Rodriguez starts in left field today. They had some problems out in the outfield in yesterday's ball game. The ball that bounced away from Hernandez in the late innings turned into a double. A little pop up that bounced in the shallow center field that Johnson and Blauser didn't handle well, and Bagwell scored from first for a single to tie the ball game. So they've made some changes. And Rodriguez, also a big bat for the lineup. Grant Brown on the bench as this one starts. And uh, nobody will be rooting harder for the Cubs to win this one than Brant Brown. Trying to exercise his own demons here tonight. Henry Rodriguez, by the way, will keep a close eye on him. He went on the disabled list on August 24th with a sprained ankle. He made only five starts after coming back and none at all since nine days ago. And in all of his uh, starts, he made five starts there in mid-month. He usually was taken out early. He just was never fully healthy enough to play. So we'll see how he looks tonight, having had, uh, in essence, the last nine days off. Stan Javier leads it off the veteran. Marvin Bernard has been hitting lead off for the Giants most of the time, but uh, they're going with the stronger defense tonight, so Javier is in there. And plus, John, Javier is a very streaky hitter, and he's in one of his streaks night right now. He's been swinging the bat really well. Hit a couple of home runs in Colorado two days ago. Javier, 290 for the year. The Giants who have not done well against Traxel. And uh, Baker going with anybody who ha has done well against him, even close to doing well against him in the past, but also going with his experienced people. Well, he wanted a true center fielder in there as well because he has Joe Carter in right field. Nothing. Shallow left center. Lance Johnson. One away. Wrigley Field, Chicago. And uh, never have the Cubs been involved in one of these in their long history. The closest that the Cubs franchise has ever come to a playoff was 1908. One of the, uh, the great pennant races of all time in the National League. And they ended up having to play, in essence, a makeup game against the Giants because of the dispute involving Fred Merkel and uh, with Hall of Famer Mordecai three finger Brown on the mound they beat Hall of Famer Christy Matthewson and went to the World Series. They won that World Series and Giants fans believe that they should never have gotten there that they had a game taken away from them unjustly. And there's uh, the way it turned out. The Cubs won it four to two. They won that World Series. They have never won a World Series since. 90 years it's been. Richard really the hitter. Giants shortstop. And the count goes to 2 0. The power comes up next. Barry Bonds on deck. The Giants in the last two months have been the highest scoring team in the majors. Higher even than the Yankees or the Rangers, the slugging American League teams. And finished the 162 games as the second highest scoring team. In the National League. Yes. And third got in. Fair ball. Out number two. And now Barry Bonds. Tremendous year for Bonds. 37 homers. 121 runs batted in. 120 runs scored, hitting over 300. Fourth in the league in slugging percentage. And Bonds had 88 extra base hits. Second in the league, only behind McGuire, even ahead of Sosa. He added his doubles and triples to the home runs. Yeah. Hey, fastball for a strike. Well, the one thing the Giants and the Cubs both have in their favor tonight, they got Bruce Framing behind the plate, a big game umpire and a veteran, which is what you want in this type of game. We've got the extra umpires for this one too, just like the postseason. A six-man crew is working. Yeah. Yeah. Outside corner, strike two call. Jim Riggleman 
managing the biggest game of his young major league managerial career off the fists and this will come back out of play that's a good pitch and it's an important pitch right there for Traxel for the remainder of the game to let Barry Bonds know that he will pitch him inside the first two pitches were away a lot of teams pitch Barry inside but they're afraid that if they miss by six inches they'll hit the ball out of the ballpark but I think early in the ball game you have to establish to Barry that you will come inside. Now Bonds backs away. Bonds in 26 career at bats against Traxel has one home run and only a 269 average against him. So Traxel has done well with him. Well, most of the Giants have struggled against him. Only Charlie Hayes and Bonds have had any success. Hayes also hitting 269, but he has two home runs against Traxel. One ball, two strikes. And they both have the same number at bats. They were both sevens for 26 coming into this ballgame. Jeff Kent would be next. Kent and Bonds, one of the third pair of hitters ever to have 30 plus homers and 120 plus RBIs for the Giants in the same year in their 116 year history. One ball, two strikes to Bonds. Tracks are really taking a lot of time here. Two and two. The Cubs feel that sometimes when he does that, takes more and more time, he outthinks himself and, and doesn't fall into a rhythm. Tyler Houston, the catcher, drops the sign. Yeah. Struck him out. A great beginning for Steve Trexel. He retires the sign in order. The Cubs are coming up. Every week, tune in to Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster. This week, Ryan interviews former Cubs Derek Lee and Greg Maddox. Coming to Chicago was a um, huge deal for me. I really got a chance to be around people who kind of understood what type of hitter I was. Late, I had a 3-0 count in uh, Colorado, and I'm like, oh, shit, I got I to gotta make a pitch here. <laughs> Off the Mound, Sunday at 6 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. I'm Mike Zen, CEO of the University of Illinois Hospital and Clinics. To our doctors, nurses, and entire staff at UI Health, thank you. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your guidance and courage have been an inspiration. Our deepest gratitude is for your commitment to our patients. Your brave, selfless care exemplifies what makes us great. And Chicago, we are here for you. We will get through this together. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation. But blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. Let Marquee Sports Network deliver fresh baseball news and analysis to you with Cubs 360 Daily. Though baseball may be on pause, we're pulling together the most knowledgeable voices coming to you daily from their home to yours. I think all baseball fans, all of us, appreciate the fact that they're working very hard to, to try to make this happen. Cubs 360 Daily, fresh each weeknight at 6 on Marquee Sports Network. Proudly presented by Miller Lite. Giants nothing in the Cubs coming up now from Wrigley Field Chicago. The wind blowing in tonight from right field which should be good news if you're a pitcher nine miles per hour 69 degrees is the game time temperature. Here's the Cubs batting order now Lance Johnson center field Mickey Morandini he's been there before with the 93 Phillies had a fine season Sammy Sosa one of the great seasons of all time. Mark Grace at first base. He's been here in the big games before and done extremely well against the Giants. Henry Rodriguez having a great year with the long ball until an injury shut him down. Gary Gaetti acquired from McGuire's team, the Cardinals, and he just was a, a key man for the Cubs in the stretch. Tyler Houston, the catcher. Jose Hernandez at short. He finished in a slump but had 23 homers. And Steve Traxel, the pitcher, batting ninth. On the mound for the Giants, 36 year old veteran. 
Mark Gardner, in many ways, this year, the best year that he's ever put together as a big league starter, and mostly because of a great finish. Well, he's got all the pitches, and the, his key has been, lately, has been his control. He's been able to spot the fastball, stay out of the middle of the plate with it, has an excellent curveball, and he will throw a little cut fastball to the left handed hitters. Strike one call to Lance Johnson. Now, Gardner in his career has had problems in the first inning, but he seems to have corrected those the last couple of months. Big curveball and it is 0 and 2. Gardner with a 6.13 lifetime ERA in the first inning. And when we saw him back in July against Atlanta, he was having those first inning blues. But they made a few changes in his preparation for starts, and he's done well the last couple of months. One and two. But suffice it to say, part of the history of Gardner, if you're going to get to him, the first inning often is the time to do it. Yeah! Richard Aurelia. And there was one away. And let's take a look at the Giants. Defensively, Charlie Hayes gets the start tonight at third base. Bill Miller has been starting over there most of the time, especially against right-handers. But as I mentioned, Charlie Hayes has had some success off of Traxel, two home runs and 26 at bats, and he's a veteran. Here's Mickey Morandini now. He takes a called strike. Mickey Morandini, the veteran, 296 for the year, eight homers, 53 batted in. And the Cubs have been touting him for the gold glove at second base. They think he's been that good defensively. Certainly had an outstanding year with the bat. Third ball. One ball and two strikes on the foul ball. You know, over the years, Cubs, uh, Joe, we've always seen the Cubs would come in here with a bunch of guys who swing the bat aggressively and very few guys who get walks. Well, Mickey Morandini, 72 walks, excellent on base average. And they've got Mark Grace getting walks, and even Sammy Sosa getting a lot more. Go! 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 So Morandini is aboard, and slamming Sammy is coming up. Sammy said before the game he doesn't figure he'll hit four home runs to tie Mark McGuire. Remember all the statistics tonight count in the regular season statistics. He says I don't think so in terms of catching McGuire but he also said I hope I can hit two. And so do these Cubs fans. And he has hit four homers in his career against Gardner. That ties his record for most home runs against any one pitcher. Check swing. Back to guard. Really back to first. Double play. So bad luck for the Cubs there. He didn't mean to hit it. And they get Sosa without even swinging the bat. No score. At Papa John's, we want you to know that from our 450 degree oven to box to you, it's our policy that your pizza is never touched once it comes out of the oven. And we're taking extra steps like no contact delivery to ensure it. This is the kind of card that has America talking. With it, people with Medicare are getting all-in-one coverage for their doctor visits, hospital care, prescription drugs, and more. This kind of insurance, called Medicare Part C, may also cover dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, fitness programs, vitamins, even healthy meals and rides to the doctor. With this kind of coverage, you do not need a Medicare supplement insurance plan. You will access your benefits through your Medicare Part C plan for one low and oftentimes $0 monthly plan premium. You deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits. Call now for free information that may help you get more coverage for less money. There is no obligation to enroll. Whether for yourself or someone you love, call the number on the screen now. Call now. 
These are uncertain times, but we at First Midwest Bank remain strong, remain committed to our clients, to our communities. And we want those who are uncertain in these uncertain times to know that even though we currently all need to stay apart, we are all in this together. First Midwest Bank. Does this make you want a Reese's? Oh, how about this? Okay, we'll stop. Just kidding. We're not gonna stop. Not sorry, Reese's. Jeff Kent, 299 average. He's never hit 300 in a season. 31 homers, a career record, 127 runs battered in. in fact, both the homers and RBIs, career records. And Kent broke a record that has stood for more than 70 years for the Giants for RBIs by a second baseman in a single season, set by Rogers Hornsby. Besides Joe Morgan, the best hitting second baseman in history, most likely. Tell you what, anytime you break anything that says Rogers Hornsby in front of it, you've done a great job because he was a special, special hitter. But Jeff Kent has become a special player in that. I mean, he's the perfect guy to compliment Barry Bonds. He's hit behind him, and every time they walk Bonds, he's made him pay for it. That's why Bonds has scored 120 runs. Come on. Here now, Joe Carter. And Joe Carter may be playing his final game in the major leagues. He said he's going to retire at the end of the season. And what a great player he has been throughout his career. 396 home runs and just a consummate RBI man. He's been a, just a driven in 100 runs and wherever he's played. Doesn't matter about the league or the team. He started his major league career right here in Chicago. He was a first round draft choice of the Cubs. Got just a little bit of a look. With the Cubs, and then they used him in a, a big trade back in 1984. Curveball misses, one ball, no strikes. It was a Carter. It was part of the deal with the Cleveland Indians that brought Rick Sutcliffe here. And of course, Sutcliffe went 16 and one for the Cubs that year in the second half to help him go to the league championship series. Of course, Carter had a chance to play every day in Cleveland, became a star, and Joe his legacy. I mean, you need a run driven in. He is the man to see. 11 years with over 100 RBIs. Yes. On the inside corner. Two and one now. Joe Carter on Thursday in his uh, final home game with the Giants got several standing ovations at Candlestick Park. Yesterday, in what he thought was his final regular season game, standing ovation in Denver. Three and one, and in both ball games, he rose to the occasion and hit a home run. So Carter says, "Let's see, final home game homered. What I thought was the final regular season game, I homered. So I'm going to have to homer tonight at Wrigley Field. 18 homers all together this year as a part-time player with Baltimore and then with San Francisco. So saying, right field." Traveled pretty well. Two down. Well, Joe Carter hit that ball very hard to right field. Even though the wind's blowing in, it wasn't a high drive. It was more of a line drive. So he he got the carry out of it. On a 3-1 count, Traxel makes a pretty good pitch. He keeps it away from Carter. He goes the other way. And Sammy Sosa had a little trouble with it. I I think he felt like the wind was blowing in. It was going to knock it down, but it really didn't. Two down, nobody on, and here comes J.T. Snow. Snow is the only player here today who has gone through one of these before. Three years ago, when he was with the Angels, they played the playoff tiebreaker at the Kingdom in Seattle. And of course, the Seattle Mariners won that ball game to win the Western Division of the American League. Two balls and no strikes. So Snow has experienced it, and his memories are certainly not very pleasant. The Angels. Lost a huge lead that year in the stretch to the Mariners. 
this year's snow is on the other side of it as the Giants have come from well back here in the late going. Oh, snow has got shoulder tendonitis. He's got a wrist problem, his right wrist. And he is not a switch hitter right now. With that only left handed, even if the Cubs bring in a left handed pitcher. Well, he really has struggled from the right side the last couple of years anyway. He gets a four pitch walk with two down. And so Charlie Hayes will come up. First base runner for the Giants against Traxel. The feeling uh, she's a Cubs fan, Joe. Longtime Cub fan. She's seen a lot of good things happen here in Chicago and a lot of things that she'd rather forget. 1969 probably comes to mind first. He remembers Harry Carey, I'm sure, fondly. You see that character of Harry. As Dusty Baker said yesterday after the game in Denver, this is the only thing he's sure that Wrigley Field will be rocking. The only thing is he wished that Harry Carey was going to be there. He figured Harry would be there in spirit. Nonetheless, here's Charlie Hayes. Part of the Giants' depth. Played third base, first base, been an excellent pinch hitter for them. Too far in with the fastball. One ball and no strikes. By the way, Charlie Hayes hails from Mississippi originally, and his family, his mom and dad, live in Mississippi. And of course, Mississippi is being threatened by Hurricane George. And Charlie has been unable to make contact with his family down there. He's very worried about them. And he asked us to, to mention if they're watching down there to please call Wrigley Field tonight so he can rest easy to know that they're all right. So the Hayes family down there give Wrigley Field a call. This inning Traxel has started to struggle with the control. He fell behind Joe Carter. Carter hit the ball hard. And he's walked J.T. Snow and this is what the Cubs are afraid of if he starts to fall behind he will definitely get in trouble and the Giants are swinging the bat very well lately they've been scoring a lot of runs and this is not a team that you can throw a lot of three one two old fastballs to and get away with it. Two and oh to Hayes Snow at first. Yeah. Good pitch on the outside edge. Two and one. Tyler Houston sets up over the outside corner and he gets a good pitch there. Nice pitch by Traxel. But smart hitting by Hayes. I think he was looking for something middle of the plate in that he could drive. And that's what you should be doing when you get the pitcher in the hole 2 0. Traxel, 27 years of age, delivers. Yeah. And it put it out there again. This time Hayes wailed away at it and didn't get it. Two and two the count. Brian Johnson is on deck. A look at third base coach Ron Wotus. Who runs through some signs. Cubs outfield pretty much straight away. Grace is on the bag at first, holding against Snow. The panoramic look at how they're playing it. Kind of pinching off the middle of the diamond. Charlie Hayes used to be almost a dead fastball hitter, but as he's gotten older and adjusted, he has become more of an off speed hitter. He handles a breaking ball, and the off speed pitches very well. That one's way inside. You can see his numbers. He's had some success against Traxel. Most of the Giants hitters have not done even that well. I mean, Hayes' success is rather modest. Snow is back to the bag. Well, three and two, two down. Snow is not a fast runner, but nonetheless, Mark Grace is going to hold him on the bag over there. Snow run. Your brain is an amazing thing. 
But as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. We got one of those new purple mattresses and it is amazing. You have to try it. Oh, this doesn't feel like memory foam. No. This feels amazing. Right? What is it? Actually, it's called Purple, and it's a completely unique comfort technology, meticulously designed to cradle and support the human body. Cool. Spring into big savings with Purple's Spring Sale. Visit purple.com slash TV today. Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk takers, misfits, bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle. Looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh cut grass. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. Deals bigger than Black Friday going on now at Overstock with over 1 million deals. Every category on sale, including furniture, rugs, decor, and so much more. And now, free shipping on everything. Overstock, where quality costs less. will not be disappointed. Mark Grace. A strike. He is uh, the only player who played in that 1989 league championship series between the Giants and the Cubs. The Giants won it in five. Almost hit it. And they did not win it because of anything Mark Grace did not do in that series. Grace hit 647 in that 89 playoff. Good on. 11 for 17. But uh, not only was he overshadowed by the Giants who won the series, but by Will Clark. Will Clark gets 650 in that series. Ooh, yeah. Down the right field line, that's a base hit. Neither one of these pitchers have a good enough fastball that they can throw it in the middle of the plate, especially when they get behind in the count. And he was behind two and one, and Gray sitting on a fastball. He gets the fastball and he rips it to right field. That's not a bad pitch. It's just not a good pitch. It was average right out away from him a little bit, but up a little bit. And Grace rips it to right field. You can see they were planning around to right center, so Joe Carter had a long way to go for that ball. So now Henry Rodriguez. As Grace takes first, he and J.T. Snow, two of the best fielding first basemen around. Rodriguez, 31 homers. Just outside. He has not homered, however, since he went down with an ankle injury back on August 24th. He hasn't played that much, actually. Today, his first start in nine days. He and Sosa are having quite a power year in tandem. Outside. That's a strike on the outside, perfectly placed. And that's what Gardner has been able to do. And if you look at Henry Rodriguez, you look at the 249 batting average, 31 home runs, 85 ribbies. That tells you that he really pitch mistakes. You make mistakes against him and he will hurt you. But if you pitch to him and keep the ball down, change speeds, you can usually keep him in the ballpark. Outside. Yeah, off on. the outside again. Well back in August he had a two homer game against the Giants in San Francisco. He made a, quite a few mistakes against him. Hey, Harry carries everywhere. Of Rodriguez and Sammy Sosa. 
with 97 home runs for the Cubs, which is an all-time Cubs record for a pair of teammates. Sosa hit most of those. Grace is really not a threat to run. And in watching the Cubs over the weekend in Houston, they really didn't do a lot of running. They were not a very aggressive ball club. Riggleman said he wasn't going to run into any outs. He wanted to play it straight up. Go! In the air. Right center, Joe Carter. And Grace will go back to first. Rodriguez has not homered since August the 19th. Well, Henry Rodriguez gets good wood on his pitch. You can see it's trying to tail away. Gardner didn't get it out as far as he wanted. And Rodriguez upset that he missed it because that was a pretty good pitch to hit. The wind is blowing in from right field. So. If he hit it high in the air to right field, even if he hit it well, he might have to hit it a little extra well. And he's got the second one, can't back to front. Double play. Second inning in a row, the Cubs have been into an inning ending double play. Test your Cubs knowledge alongside the experts. Hi, it's Chris Myers. Coming up this week on Play at Home Trivia, presented by Miller Lite. We have two former Cubs and Dan Plesak and Carlos Pena. How many platinum glove winners have won a Cubs uniform? <laughs> I guess. I guess, and I connected. Was, I guess. You're going to try to get <laughs> nine innings out of me. You called the wrong guy. Stay safe at home and play safe at home with Chris Myers, presented by Miller Lite, Sunday at 6.30. I'm Mike Zen, CEO of the University of Illinois Hospital and Clinics. To our doctors, nurses, and entire staff at UI Health, thank you. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your guidance and courage have been an inspiration. Our deepest gratitude is for your commitment to our patients. Your brave, selfless care exemplifies what makes us great. And Chicago, we are here for you. We will get through this together. Sport has the power to unite. It has the power to build communities. It has the power to break down barriers and allow people to feel as though they're on equal footing with one another. We at Cubs Charities have the ability to do some critical work right now, utilizing the power that sports has in building community, in inspiring hope, and uniting a city. Get to know where to place your next bet on Follow the Money on Marquee Sports Network. Vegas veterans Mitch Ross and Paulie Howard host this hour-long show, share their knowledge of sports and gambling. The Cubs always take money, so it doesn't matter. Everyone would come to town and bet the Cubs win the World Series, no matter who was on the team. Get the most up-to-date information in live odds, predictions, and betting trends from the sports gambling capital of the world. Follow the money, live weekday mornings at 6 on Marquee Sports Network. Well, Dusty Baker said he wishes Harry could be here. He figured he would be in spirit. And uh, it feels like Harry's everywhere you look around Wrigley Field. The legendary former broadcaster of the Cubs. It's kind of a sad year for some of our broadcast icons. We lost Harry Carey before the season started, and then during the summer, we lost Jack Brickhouse, another Hall of Fame, former voice of the Cubs. And both of those uh, former Cubs broadcasters commemorated this year on the Cubs uniforms. Here's Brian Johnson, the eighth place hitter for the Giants. Good pitch to hit there. Well, I like that. I, I, to me, the Giants have to be aggressive. They have to look for a first pitch fastball or look for a pitch in the zone and try to do something with it. The one thing the Giants do not want to do is go late into this ball game, fifth, sixth inning, one to nothing or tie ball game. You have to try to do something aggressively in the first few innings to take the crowd out of the ball game. When you're the road team, that's the toughest part. Well, so far, they've had a hard time even getting somebody on base. The only base runner allowed by Traxel in the first two was a two on walk to JT Snow in the second inning. Into the 
upper deck. This is the ninth tiebreaker playoff in Major League Baseball history. There were never any of these kind of tiebreaker playoffs until 1946. As you can see, ordinarily we'd see all the other games in baseball being followed on that out of town scoreboard, but there is only the one today. Giants have been in two other tiebreaker playoffs in their history. And they're both very famous. 1951, after a tremendous comeback against the Dodgers, they went into a three game playoff. And in the third game, they won on Bobby Thompson's shot heard around the world. 1962, the Giants and Dodgers again. The Giants again won in the third game with a four run ninth inning at Dodger Stadium. Six to four winner. Dusty Baker's been in one. You asked him about it before. 1980, the last National League tiebreaker playoff, the Dodgers and the Astros had a one game set to. And the Astros beat Dusty's Dodgers in that one. Well, I was playing for the Astros that year, and uh, I was kind of the veteran on the ball club. So before the game, my advice to the players was to be aggressive. Let's go out, do something early, and take the crowd out of the game. It took me literally and just beat up on the Dodgers. Right field, Sosa going back. He's under it. That one down. Shoot, one down. He gets good wood on it, good extension. And Sosa started back. It looked like the ball was going farther than it actually ended up, but you could see that the wind is starting to knock it down right about now, and Sosa's able to make the catch on the warning track. Two gone, or rather one gone, and Mark Gardner coming up. John, the one thing I remember about the 1980 playoff, we went into the clubhouse before the ball game, and you looked around, and some of the guys who had never been there before were, you know, looking a little nervous, like they didn't know what they were doing. And Joaquin Andahar, who was one of the star pitchers, oh. stood up in the middle of the clubhouse. He said, "For all you guys that are scared, you should have brought your Doberman with you, but it's too late now, so you got to go out and play." And we, you know, it kind of broke up the clubhouse. Guys had a laugh and relaxed a little bit, and they did go out and played very well. And it, it didn't hurt that Joe Negro pitched pretty well. Well, the only problem is you had to use your best pitcher to get into the playoffs. You didn't have him ready for the first game of the you know, playoffs that year. And that was a great playoff series. The Astros and the Phillies, best of five. The Phillies won it. Might have been the difference. Yeah, I think it, it definitely made a difference because we couldn't use him three games. Yeah. It's a little bit high. And he was the best pitcher on the staff at that time. Two and two to guard. One out, nobody on. In but the third inning. I also remember that we had lost three games in a row to the Dodgers. So the point is that what happened yesterday shouldn't have any bearing and can't. You have to say, hey, it's over, and you start all over again. That's what these two teams have to do today. Yeah! Strike three. Second strike out of attraction. Two down. Well, it wasn't so dramatic this year as 1980. The Giants didn't sweep the Cubs this weekend to get here, but 10 days ago, the Cubs led the Giants by five games, and two teams were ahead of the Giants. Since then, the Cubs went two and six. The Giants, eight and two. And that created the tie. The Mets lost their last five in a row, getting swept by the Braves over the weekend in Atlanta. And losing two in New York to the Montreal Expos. To me, that was the real killer even more than the Braves. Javier. That's a foul out of play. The Mets got shut out in the last 17 innings in that two game series by the Expos. Tough weekend though in Atlanta. I mean you go in there and on Saturday Glavin starts a 20 game winner. He's relieved by Nagel a 16 game winner who in turn was relieved by Millwood a 17 game winner. First three pitches they use had 53 wins. Not only that, John, Glavin went out there knowing he didn't have to pace himself. He only was going five innings, so he could, you know, he could pitch his five innings and act like that's the end of the ball game. Every, you know, every time he went out there, so he give you, he could give you his extra best stuff, and that's what he did. And Maddox yesterday, the Mets could not win. Stan Javier, the leadoff man for the Giants, two balls and a strike, two down, nobody on. The Giants have gotten only one man on base against Traxel thus far. That's been the history of 
Steve Traxel, John, he will pitch well for three innings maybe. But the second or third time through the order, he seems to maybe change his pitching pattern too much or try to go to something different. And if you're a patient team, you can stay with him and you can usually have some pitches to hit your second or third at bat against him. Here we go. Just off the outside. Three and one to Hobby. Rich Aurelia would be next. No score. We're in the third inning. Javier not known for his power, but he had a two home run game in Colorado the other day, and this is a 3 1 pitch that he can turn on if he gets a fastball. Too low, he gets the walk. That is the second base runner for the Giants, both on walks by Traxel. Javier also can steal a base. 21 steals for the year, second in the club. He's only been caught five times, so good percentage. Well, what do you think, Dusty Baker? Trying to have him run here in front of Aurelia. I doubt. I definitely think that if he, you know, you put him on his own, if he can get a good jump, he takes off. Richard. And I believe if you're the road team, you have to make something happen. You just can't wait back and hope for good things. But Aurelia standing in. Aurelia round to the third his first time. Ryan tight for ball one. Baker relaying some signs over to third base coach Ron Wotus. Brilliant. And Javier give Wotus their attention. Wotus got hit in the jaw, on the right side of the jaw, giving a, a slide signal the other day in Denver at third base. The throw from Larry Walker went right through Vinny Castilla and hit Wotus in the jaw. Away again, looking at Botus. I mean, how many options could they have here with two down, Joe? Could go through all these signs. Well, it's more habit than anything else. Second baseman Mickey Morandini, way over toward the middle. The right side of the infield is almost wide open for Aurelia with Grace over there on the bag with Javier. John, you want the hitter to look down at the third base coach, let him go through signs every time because you do not want him not to look down. You have to yell at him. To give him a sign because everyone in the ballpark will know something's up. So that's why it's important that you look down there after every pitch. Two balls and a strike. Barry Bonds is on deck. Notice again. Relaying the signs from Dusty Baker. It's an important pitch here because it allows the Giants to do anything they want right here. If Javier wants to take off, he knows they're not going to pitch out. If Dusty wants to put a hit and run on, he can do that. So he should take off then. Well, I think Trax will throw it well. <laughs> Man, do I, I? I am. He's thinking like you are, right? <laughs> He's thinking like you are. You explained it for me. After you explained it, then I decided. For both of them. Javier should run, but Trax should throw. <laughs> he is not running. Two and two the count. Dugout. Javier, by the way, sat out for a couple of weeks where he did not start a game for the Giants with a strained right hip flexor muscle. So he was not at the full capability. But he got a souvenir almost. Well, he made a dive. That's he kept it on the infield. Kept it the infield. There goes Javier. Got Strike three call. Javier is in there, but it doesn't matter. Aurelia has been caught out on strikes. Bonds will have to wait a minute. Weather's perfect. Family's all together. And we switched to Geico, save money on our boat insurance. How can it get any better than this? Dad, I just caught a goldfish. There's no goldfish in this lake. Oh. Oh. Whoa. It's pure gold. We're going to be rich. We're going to be rich!
much. <laughs> it only gets better when you switch and save with Geico. Without Bernie's, majority of these students probably would not have any books at home. The more that they're able to read and write and communicate with others, the more successful they're going to be getting a job, going to college, all those things we want for them in the future. Having a book in your hand and, you know, reading it and exploring is virtually impossible without Bernie's books. We used to be so stressed from all the demands on our time, but then our doctor prescribed us something that's changed our lives. It's called sleep. It's like being awake, but you feel good. And ever since we bought a purple mattress, this sleep thing has been taken to a whole new level. The purple grid cradles your pressure points while keeping you cool. Unlike memory foam that heats you up like a weird lingering hug. <laughs> Try purple today. If you're not 100% satisfied after 100 nights, you can return it for a full refund. Purple, the best thing since sleep. I had a husband who was my vision, but when he died, I knew I was in big trouble. At Care.com, search from lots of local caregivers who can help with meals, housekeeping, personal care, and more. It costs less than you think, and it's easy to pay. Care.com. Giants nothing, Cubs nothing. Last with the third inning. John Miller, Joe Morgan here with you on the eve of the American and National League Divisional Series. Let's begin the ball in most cases. So look at the Rangers in front of that. All time hand operated scoreboard at Wrigley Field. You like those things, don't you? I'm into it. Oh, okay. Everybody should have a hand operated scoreboard. Oh. With all of the scores from out of town being posted at all times. It's in the handbook, Joe. Build a new stadium. Need an out of town scoreboard. It's all right. I don't mind them punching the computer and throwing it up there very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> There's strike one to Tyler Houston. I think this is a very important inning for Gardner if he can get the Cubs out quickly. Because the Giants have Kent and Bonds coming up the next inning. And he has struggled a little bit. He's been getting runners on, but he's been able to get the ground ball to get out of the innings. But it's important for him just to establish that he's in control of this ball game. Misses with a curveball there. One ball, two strikes to Tyler Houston. Jose Hernandez and Steve Traxel will follow. Two and two. Mark Gardner out of Fresno State University. And last year in the stretch run, he really did not pitch at all for the Giants. His wife, Lori, had uh, a life threatening no. attack. That ball is driven deep. Javier back to the wall. Makes the catch against the Ivy and hangs on to it. Well, that pays dividends right there because Marvin Bernard's a little lot shorter than. Than Stan Javier, and that may have been a more difficult play for him. But the other reason that Javier is a true center fielder, whereas Bernard is actually a corner guy, he's a left fielder or a right fielder. Two balls, two strikes, fastball against the middle of the plate. You can see Brian Johnson set up outside. Now watch Javier being taller than Marvin Bernard. It's not as difficult to play, but a good play there by Stan. Jose Hernandez now. One ball, no strikes. Hernandez had 23 home runs for the Cubs this year. Finished the year in a slump, though. That's a called strike. One ball, one strike. But Gardner's wife, Lori, actually had a very complicated transplant surgery, liver transplant surgery. And uh, she survived. It's doing very well. And uh, the Gardner family, as a whole, we're glad to report, doing extremely well. And Mark Gardner, unlike last year, pitching down the stretch for the Giants and leading their staff. Yes, Three and one. The pitcher, Traxel, is on deck. Hernandez finished the year in a horrible slump. His last uh, 84 at bats at only 155. But he gets a walk here. Steve Traxel. 
this is where the defense at first base of Jack Snows comes into play, John, because as a pitcher, he'll be trying to bunt the ball to first base, and JT is very good at coming in and getting the lead runner on a bunt. JT. Yeah. Well, yeah. Father Jack. Named after his father. Giving Jack Snow a little publicity yeah. there. Yeah. Wide receiver, former wide receiver for the Rams. He's a broadcaster now yeah. for the Rams. That's a bunt. First runner of this game to get the scoring position. Excellent bunt there by Steve Traxel, and a lot of times pitchers aren't able to get that bunt down and help themselves. Excellent bunt. Watchy just lays the bat out there, catches the ball on the barrel of the bat, and guides it to first base. Good job. John Lance Johnson, one of the smallest players stature-wise. In the major leagues, not very big boned or anything, uses a 40 ounce bat. That's what he swings. Curveball for a strike. In this day and age, when most players are using 31s, 32s, he's up to 40 ounces. Like the Babe, Babe Ruth and the guys used to swing those. Willie Stargell, Clemente, uses a real heavy bat. Owen on the count. Fastball. But Lance Johnson, when we were here eight days ago on Sammy Sosa Day, Sammy did not hit a home run, but Lance Johnson did. Finished with two home runs in 300. Well, he's not finished yet. He's got two and 300 at bats right now. Curveball. We have played three scoreless innings. The tension builds a little bit. Bonds, Kendon Carter coming up. No score. There has never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cashback rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cashback, and noodles. I'm Mike Zen, CEO of the University of Illinois Hospital and Clinics. To our doctors, nurses, and entire staff at UI Health, thank you. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your guidance and courage have been an inspiration. Our deepest gratitude is for your commitment to our patients. Your brave, selfless care exemplifies what makes us great. And Chicago, we are here for you. We will get through this together. Do you have concerns about mild memory loss related to aging? Prevagen is the number one pharmacist-recommended memory support brand. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. From our family to yours, we want to encourage you to keep going. Keep protecting what's most important. Keep hopeful in the face of all this. Keep believing. Keep being strong. Keep supporting the people on the front line. Keep staying together while staying apart. Keep being fearless. And most of all, keep dreaming. American Family Insurance is mailing our personal auto insurance customers a premium relief payment to help them keep going. We'll keep being here when you need us. was just a raucous and loud as the game was beginning Joe but right now a little more tense as Barry Bond strides to the plate and let's take a look at how he pitched Bond in the first inning. I said the fastball right there was very important because he ends up throwing him a change up down and away and because Bonds has to be aware of the inside pitch he can't go out over the plate looking for the off speed pitch even though he knows that's what Traxel is going to try to do but if you come inside on a hitter and make him inside conscious it opens up the outside for you. But Bonds makes adjustments too. That is foul. Got the breaking ball up and in and shot it foul. Bonds as you saw hit over 400 in September or has up till now seven homers and 21 RBIs in the month. 
Both he and Kent have driven in more than a run per game since the end of July. I don't care what you think about his personality or anything else. He is a great player. To the screen. And quickly he's behind in the count 0 and 2. I mean for a guy to hit over 400 home runs and steal over 400 bases. That is special speed and power and he's the only one in the history of the game to ever do that. And we've had a lot of great players play this game and no one has ever been able to. Put those stats on the board. Plus he has three most valuable player awards. One ball two strikes. And they don't give those away. You have to earn them. Well I mean he's the whole package. Offense and steal a base he has 28 steals. And a perennial gold glove outfielder. Tried to sneak it over that inside edge, but too far in. Two and two. And of course, Sammy Sosa, you want to talk about the whole package? And this year, Johnny's been better defensively than ever before. His entire game has just picked up. Not just the home run production, but his everything for Sammy picked up this year. is doing he is just continuing to make bonds aware of the inside corner yet he's getting him out away the pitch before he came inside hard now look at this he goes back away tailing away nothing bonds can do with it because you have to protect the inside and he goes away all you can do is swing with your arms look at that all bonds can do is go the other way and not much of a threat there so he's keeping Barry off balance just with the inside pitch. Jeff Kent 63 RBIs in the last 54 games for Kent back out of play he not only broke Rogers Hornsby's franchise record for RBIs in a season by a second baseman he missed 24 consecutive games on the disabled list and was able to do that. But Joe you always have these <laughs> these people stopping by to see you. Well, I've made some good friends over the years. The uh, we saw Michael Jordan he threw out the first ball. Joe's close personal friend, and now the Reverend Jesse Jackson just came by. Another close personal friend. <laughs> yeah. Tracks her. It's a strike. Kent tried to check, and it's 0-2. This must be a big game. It must be a big game. You're right. <laughs> To the count to Kent. Joe Carter on deck. Right there. Yeah. Just off the outside of the third ball, and it is one and two. So the way Traxel is pitching right now, John, it's surprising that he pitched poorly in his last five starts. He's not missing into the middle of the plate. Anytime he misses with his pitches, you know, they're unhittable. They're off the plate outsider or inside. That was off the plate inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Off the plate and on the hip. So Kent hit by the pitch. Well, you see what he's doing. He's moving the ball around. He went away the pitch before. Now he's trying to come inside corner with a fastball, but it gets away from him, and he hits Kent in the hip. But that's what he's doing so well so far tonight. He's moving the ball in, out, and changing speeds. So the Giants get a base runner with less than two outs for the first time. I mean, it's been kind of meager for the Giants in terms of anything offensively. Joe Carter now he lined one hard to right field his first time. He's well, 0 for 1. He fell behind Carter and Carter really hit a fastball hard. He sprang slider over the outside. Kent at first. Kent was wearing a brace on his right knee. He hyperextended that knee earlier this year back in June. Alex Rodriguez in an interleague game. Hit him hard, trying to break up a double play. That's why he missed the 24 consecutive games. And he's had to wear that brace ever since. He's back to the back. Nonetheless, Carter, or rather a Kent, has stolen nine bases. So if you don't keep a close eye on him, he might go. The outfielder right toward left against Joe Carter. Joe Carter had a 29 runs battered in for the Giants, or has. I think this is a postseason game. <laughs> it counts.
close in the regular season. 29 RBIs and only 102 at bats. Look what he did in September. One ball, one strike to Carter. Joe Carter, the only man in World Series history to hit a home run to end the World Series when his team was trailing at the moment that he hit it. Bill Mazeroski, Bill Mazeroski hit one, but they were tied. With the Yankees. These are the only two to win the World Series with a home run, and Carter's the only one with his team behind, and will forever be remembered for that. But what I remember for Joe is the fact that he was just so good in the clutch, not just then, but all the time. Well, Traxel, and they. One of the things that they've complained about with Traxel over the years is that he won't pitch inside enough. Well, he's pitching inside now, but the ball is getting away. And, and maybe that's the problem, John. It's difficult to pitch inside. Everyone can't pitch inside. You know, you, you, a lot of guys want to throw the ball inside, and then they're afraid to hit the hitter, and it moves out over the plate. Or they miss badly inside. It doesn't do you any good to try to pitch inside if you're missing by a foot. Or you see the Cubs pitching coach. But one other thing to remember, John, you talk about the wind blowing in. It doesn't matter if Joe Carter hits it toward left field. Left field, the ball will still carry here. The only place that the wind will knock the ball down is in right field. But again, a lot of pitchers can just cannot pitch inside consistently. Well, he had Kent in a hole at two strikes, and he hit it. He almost hit Carter. It's two and one now to Carter. And it's two and two. Carter lunging for a breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes. Fourth inning. No score. Ron Wotus again flashing some signs to Carter. The only giant who's been able to actually pull the ball so far. Richard really in the first inning hit a ground ball to third. Everybody else, when they've hit the ball, have hit it the other way. And as you mentioned, Joe, you pointed it out a couple of times. Because Tappany has him thinking about that inside pitch. Deep down on the field line, hooking into the corner. This one is foul. That pitch was up a little bit. That was a screamer. Pitch is up and over the middle of the plate, but Joe Carter is pretty much a hands hitter, and every once in a while he just rolls that top hand and he pulls a lot of balls foul. 355 feet to the foul pole in left field. 353 to the right field foul pole, but the power out is much shallower than, than most. Two and two to Carter. JT Snow on deck. The split finger pitch down on the way. He uses that as his changeup. Full count, three and two. Well, we'll see if Dusty Baker wants to send Jeff Kent in this situation. Carter and everyone's taking a look. Well, I'm taking my cue from you, Joe, so I think he's running. Well, base runners are 8 for 16, which is, you know, 50 50 chance against Steve Traxel. Again, I believe if you're the road team, you have to be aggressive. You have to be more aggressive. So I say, yes, he should be going as well. But Dusty Baker's the manager. He's gotten into the playoffs. Man, you didn't do that. He's running. And a check swing by Carter. Ball in the dirt. Ball four. So Kent to second, Carter to first. On the walk, the Giants have two men on for the first time. And yet they do not yet have a hit against Traxel. Houston out there to talk to Traxel. Remember, this started when he had Kent in a hole. He had him one ball and two strikes, and then he hit him trying to go inside. And that's after pitching. So well to Barry Bonds. JT Snow. This has been a year where JT's emotions have been torn. His mother, after a courageous battle with cancer, passed away. And the JT, for a long time, had his attentions elsewhere. He's had some injury problems as well. But nonetheless, has put up 15 homers and 79 runs batted in.
crowd very quiet very tense right now. This has started out as one of those real tense pitchers battles. The splitter. That makes it two down. Charlie Hayes coming up. To third part of the second. A little surprised that Grace was playing that deep because he got the ground ball and didn't have a chance to you know to go for the double play. Normally in a double play situation you play shallow enough that you can you know start a double play because in the, that situation you have to give up something some range to get something trying to get the double play to get out of the inning. So is that I mean it's like you say you were there yesterday and Jim Riggleman is trying to play real close to the best he's trying really not to take chances. Well that that's what it appears to me but. I mean, it's his call, right? Yeah, you got the ground ball, and you didn't even have a chance to get the lead runner. Wasn't even an option. Here's Charlie Hayes. A pitch up, out over the plate, but back to the screen. It's on one. Yesterday, in their loss at Houston, he went with Terry Mulholland, the Drigleman. Well, on a pitch, just a great game, a courageous game. But lost a three to one lead in the eighth inning with the Astros' best right handed sluggers up there. And then he used Rod Beck out of the bullpen for two and two third innings. Did not have much confidence in anybody else in his bullpen right now. In the dirt, saved by Houston. Keeps Kent at third base in a scoreless game. One and one to Charlie Hayes. But what Houston does here is just puts his body in front of it. He doesn't really try to catch the ball. You see, he throws his hands open so it will get caught up in there. But all you do is try to get your body in front of it. You do not really try to catch the ball, just block it. One ball, one strike to Charlie Hayes. Kent at third, Carter at second. Both ready to go on anything with two down. A splitter, and it misses low. Two and one now. But he's got first base over. He didn't have to give it to Charlie Hayes. And the man behind him, Brian Johnson, is, has never had success with Traxel. Hayes has had his moments against Traxel. Brian Johnson has been swinging the bat well lately, John, so you have to stop it someplace. <laughs> you know? So if he ends up walking Hayes, he's taking a risk. Exactly, because then he doesn't have any margin for error. If he gets behind Brian Johnson, he has to give in. Two balls and a strike. Two on, two out. Three and one. Well, he wanted that one. And the, the Wrigley Field uh, faithful wanted it. Three and one the count. Well, he got Hayes to chase one up and away. And his first at bat, he tried it once more, and Hayes didn't bite. Nothing to nothing. The Giants do not yet have a hit against Steve Traxel. This will be the 22nd pitch of this inning for Traxel. Yes. The splitter. Strike two. Well, you you like a guy to want to hit in this situation, but you do not want him to chase pitches out of the strike zone like that. And as one. The 40,000 plus at Wrigley Field rising to their feet with two strikes and two out. Two on for the Giants. Now Traxel himself diffuses the crowd. <laughs> There's Kent at third, Carter at second. Traxel still hasn't gotten the sign that he wants, and Hayes is getting frustrated at the plate. Well, I don't know if he wants to throw the pitch at all. Well, Houston's going to go out, so they've been having a long distance argument there between the mound and home plate. Well, you see a lot of pitchers now covering their mouth with their glove because a lot of times you can read their lips. Well, it's a famous into that circle because that's what Will Clark did. When he was facing the Cubs here in the 89 playoffs, he read the lips of Greg Maddox say he's going with the fastball. Don Zimmer went out. Will Clark then stepped in and hit a grand slam against Maddox. 
right here. Three and two to Hayes. The splitter in the dirt. Ball four, and now the bases are loaded, and he will have to face Johnson. And Johnson did make very hard contact on a ball that got knocked down by the wind back in the third inning to right field. And here comes Phil Regan, the pitching coach, out to the mound. Ryan Johnson, former quarterback from Stanford University, 13 home runs for the year. Three men on, two men out. The Giants and Cubs scoreless. The Giants yet without a hit. Yeah. Starts him with a curve. And that's right. one. And that's okay if you're Brian Josh and say, okay, I give him that. But if he misses with that pitch, then you've got two pitches to play with. So you what you do as a hitter is put yourself in the best possible hitting situation you can get. And I believe that was sitting there looking for a fastball on the first pitch. So give tracks of credit, just a great pitch. Yeah, it's only one strike. He so executed. What? Kent at third, Carter at second, Hayes at first, as you saw. Two down. Yes. Too high, one ball, one strike. Uh, I guess it was a split finger pitch, but it didn't, uh, it didn't I get think, it where he wanted it. I really think he tried to throw another curveball, Johnny. Just threw it too hard. I think he tried to come with the same pitch and threw it too hard. One ball, one strike to Brian Johnson, and uh, yeah, it's nail biting time here at Wrigley in the fourth inning. In the dirt. Come on now. See now, if I'm Brian Johnson, I'm back in that same situation. I'm sitting dead red here, looking for another fastball that I can drive someplace. If he throws me a curveball and he throws a strike, so what? I mean, he's he's got to do it again. So it's real risky now to throw anything but exactly. the fastball. So you've got to sit there and say, I'm going to look for a fastball. So he's not thrown one yet to Johnson in this event. But you can't chase it out of the strike zone. Just have to sit and say, I'm going to look for a fastball right in a certain zone. Kent, Carter, and Hayes, the three runners. Two down, fourth inning. You know? Again, with Traxel taking an extreme amount of time. I mean, he and Houston act like they've never even met each other. <laughs> I mean, whatever Houston's called for, Traxel never seems to want to throw it. Two and one the count. Yeah. Set on the fastball looked like a little up a little bit, but at least he was aggressive. He got the pitch he wanted. He just didn't hit it. Cubs fans rise to their feet all around Wrigley Field again. Two balls, two strikes, two down, and three men on. Well, now if you're Brian Johnson, you just have to hit the ball. See the ball, hit the ball. You can't really sit there and say, I'm going to sit dead fastball or look for a splitter. So he can have try to that. see the ball. He could try that splitter now. Right. You have to see the ball and go after it. The curve strike three call. The Giants leave the bases loaded. Trexel laboring through 29 pitches. Got through. Sosa coming up. Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk takers, misfits, bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle, looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh cut grass. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. I'm Mike Zen. CEO of the University of Illinois Hospital and Clinics. To our doctors, nurses, and entire staff at UI Health, thank you. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your guidance and courage have been an inspiration. Our deepest gratitude is for your commitment to our patients. Your brave, selfless care exemplifies what makes us great. And Chicago, we are here for you. We will get through this together. From our family to yours, we want to encourage you to keep going. Keep protecting what's most important. Keep hopeful in the face of all this. Keep believing. Keep being strong. Keep supporting the people on the front line. Keep staying together while staying apart. Keep being fearless. And most of all, keep dreaming. American Family Insurance is mailing our personal auto insurance customers a premium relief payment to help them keep going. We'll keep being here when you need us. Home is 
more important than ever. At Overstock, we are committed to delivering on all your home needs. Starting now, everything ships for free. Big or small, Overstock, where quality costs less and everything ships free. In the friendly confines of Wrigley Field, the wild card berth at stake. No score yet. There's a high fastball that he got, but it was out of the strike zone. And then Traxel just makes a great pitch. But when you get two strikes on you, you can no longer look for a pitch. You have to see the ball and go after it. But he made a good pitch. Now Gardner to Morandini, who singled his first time and a curveball for a strike. Gardner sat a good long while there while Traxel not only threw a lot of pitches, but took uh, interminable lengths of time between pitches. Sammy Sosa is on deck. This is an important part here again for Mark Gardner. If he can go one, two, three and get him right back out there for Traxel, make Traxel go right back to work, then without having him sit there and be able to relax for a while, everything will work in the Giants' favor. Traxel hoping for a little time off now. Two strikes to Morandini. Sammy Sosa on deck, then Mark Grace. So they'd like to see Morandini get aboard here in front of the big guys. This is the guy who's been getting it done all year long. Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa, surely the MVP in the National League. Well, if I had a vote, I would give it to him, but although there have been a lot of great seasons this year in the National League. Greg Vaughn at San Diego. Lou and Bagwell and Biggio and Bell in Houston. He had a two, now it's three and two. That's Morandini. I mean, he is a very discerning hitter at the plate, and he'll make a pitcher throw a lot of pitches. He will take a walk. And of course, Mark McGuire has had the best, you know, season of his career and the most. Popular season. I mean, I think he's the player of the year, but the MVP and the player of the year, in my opinion, are two different people or can be two different people. And even McGuire has said, hey, Sammy Sosa's got to get the MVP. Yeah. Left field. Bonds with room in the corner. It's the big part of left field. So one gone. And now, Sammy Sosa. Been the custom with McGuire and Sosa. The crowd rises to its feet as Sammy comes to the plate. And the umpires have to wait for a new batch of balls. You know, talking to Billy Williams a week or so ago, he said the big difference in Sammy Sosa this year. One of the things he did, he moved off the plate and lowered his hands. So he used to have his hands up real high. He moved off the plate, lowered his hands, and he thinks that gives him a better view of the plate. Pitch. He can read the pitch better. Rather than being close to the plate, worried about the inside pitch, he used to chase a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. He doesn't do that nearly as much now. And it's 2 0. Sosa used to go up there and just hack, and you could get him out swinging the bad balls. But this year, they said over 300 all season long. But also, Three of his home runs the whole year come on the first pitch. McGuire, by contrast, had 12 on the first pitch. Well, a little over anxious there. Well, but you know, he's aggressive. And you say to yourself, hey, I'm up here. I'm the big guy. I've got to swing the bat. That one he couldn't do much with. But it's still two balls and one strike. <laughs> you know what I mean? You were hitting the count. So you free, had a foul to take. Free swing. Yeah, you had one foul to take there. So he took it. Mark Grace on deck. No score. Fourth inning. 66 home runs, Sammy Sosa at the plate. He didn't have a foul to take there. That was a bad pitch up and in, and not much he could do with it, even if he hit it. Watch this. You see the setup. I mean, Mark Gardner misses by about three feet. Brian Johnson set up low and away, and that pitch is up and in. And that's the problem that we see a lot of pitchers have. They're trying to make perfect pitches on McGuire and Sosa, and they make mistakes in doing so. Two and two. The curve for the strikeout. And suddenly, silence of the defeat. Mighty Casey has struck out. Slam and center. 
because I mean all the air went out of this place then. I mean it was incredible. This uh, cacophony of sound is silence just like that. Well that's a beautiful pitch. I mean that curveball just disappeared. It looked like it was going to be a pretty good pitch to hit. But all of a sudden uh, the bottom fell out of it. Well Gardner's got a great curveball and that was as good as you'll see. And that was his first strikeout. Good time to get it. Now Mark Grace. He's single to right his first time. Two down nobody on. On the outside for a strike. Grace didn't think so. No score for them. The Cubs have two hits. But have hit into two double plays. Gardner has walked one. Cubs have left one man on. The Giants have had no hits against Traxel. Traxel has walked four and he hit a bat. Trexel's got to get right back out there. Gardner, Javier, and Aurelian coming up. No score. in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust. Built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank. Because no other bank can say the same. There has never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus. Free delivery, cash back, and noodles. Who is most at risk for coronavirus? People over 65, people with underlying medical conditions like heart disease, chronic lung disease, asthma, diabetes, people undergoing cancer treatment, and people with weakened immune systems. What should you do if you or a loved one is at higher risk? Avoid close contact with people. Avoid crowds. Stay home if you can. Wash your hands frequently. Learn more ways to protect yourself and others at coronavirus.gov. Every weekday night, tune into the stadium. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred wants to play as many games as possible as soon as possible. If this 2020 Cubs team wants to get back to where they were at 2016, I think David Ross is going to be the right guy to lead them there. You're either going to get through this or you're going to grow through this. And I think it's a great chance for coaches, business people, everyone to get better at your personal craft. Marquee Sports Network will bring you every sim game until real baseball returns. The stadium, weeknights at 6.30 on Marquee Sports Network. Giants nothing, Cubs nothing. Darkness has long since settled in over Chicago. One team will go home for a long winter's rest and one will Good, head to Atlanta Good luck to after this game. And we have gone real far from deciding anything up till now. No score. Fifth inning. The Giants have had the game's only serious threat, getting the bases loaded in the fourth. Mark Gardner against his counterpart, Steve Traxel, and there is ball one. Traxel, in his previous start in Milwaukee last Wednesday, was breezing along. He had a 7 to nothing lead and a shutout for six innings. But then... The Brewers scored four runs in the seventh against him, knocking him from the box. And again, the final the Cubs lost on the drop fly ball by Brad Brown, eight to seven. That was a, a crusher. Foul away by Gardner. One ball, two strikes. We all know that Brad Brown dropped that ball that day, John. But one other thing that happened in the ninth inning is that Jim Regalman chose to walk Larry Burnett, Burnett, and put the winning run on base. And that was the run that scored when Brown dropped the ball. So, uh, Jeremy Burnett scored all the way for first, running hard. And you know, and a lot of people say, "Well, it was the right thing to do," and it, it probably is. But there are reasons that you don't put the winning run on base a lot of times because things can't happen. Here we go. Strike three call. So Gardner struck out twice. One gone for San Francisco in the fifth, and leadoff man Stan Javier coming up. 
Well, Traxel has made some excellent pitches, especially with two strikes. He's been able to spot that fastball on the outside corner, as he does here with Gardner, and he's also been able to throw the curveball on the outside corner. So he has been able to make big pitches when he's needed them. You can see the difference in the pitchers, though. Traxel throwing a lot more pitches than Gardner has. Quite a few more. Traxel threw 29 pitches in that fourth inning, but he got through it. The Giants have not scored and they do not have a hit against him. Javier has flied out and walked. And that's ball one to Stan Javier. A veteran, excellent outfielder, can steal a base. Ended up being the Giants' regular right fielder for the second half of last season. Shows bunt, takes the ball, and it is 2 0. Oh. Barry Bonds has not yet come to bat with anybody on base, and neither has Jeff Kent. When you talk about shutting down the Giants, that's a good way to do it. If you can pitch to them from the windup, you're in a lot better position than trying to throw from the stretch. 3 0. Oh, he has walked four and hit one in the first four innings of this game. Cubs have everybody on alert tonight. Kevin Tappany, who was their ace starter this year, is in the bullpen if needed. And it's 3 and 1. Tappany, a 19 game winner. And uh, if necessary, he might even be the right handed setup man for Rod Beck. Rod Beck, who Threw 36 pitches yesterday and 24 the day before, but they figure that they can give him an inning, or that he can give them an inning if needed. Oh, it's a walk for Javier. That is walk number five by Traxel. And Houston and Traxel will talk as Phil Reagan and Jim Riggleman. Looking uh, another tight lip right now, as you might expect. Well, one thing that the Cubs do know, and that is that. Javier had that base stolen the last time up when Aurelia took strike three so they have to be more aware of him this time than before because Javier also knows that he can make it now. Javier had 21 steals during the season or it has during the season. <laughs> this is a regular season game. Rich Aurelia has grinded a third and struck out looking. The reason I knew it was a regular season game John I went to Giants clubhouse before the ball game and they were filling out the pass list. Players still get free passes. You do not get those in the divisional playoffs, the LCS, and the World Series. You have to pay for those extra tickets. Starting tomorrow, it's a new season. Almost hit it. One ball, no strikes. Now, here's the situation again. If you're Dusty and you want to hit and run, this is the pitch to do it on. But Traxel has been a little erratic for the hit and run, meaning that he's missed badly with a lot of pitches. Like the last pitch, you do not want to hit and run when a guy is not consistently in the strike zone. But if you're Javier at first base and you get the hit and run, you should still try to steal the base. Barry Bonds on deck. I mean, you'd like to stay out of the double play so as to give Bonds a chance here with somebody on base. Well, Javier was wasn't sure of the sign, so he steps out and he's asked for it again. He talked the first base coach now he's getting the signs all over again. Ron Wotus flashing the signs from the third base coach's box. Aurelia now stands back in. One ball and no strikes to count. I don't think anything is on now. When that happens, usually a manager, even if he had a sign on, he will take it off. That's foul right past Wotus. One ball, one strike. The stands at Wrigley Field out very close to the field, especially in the corners. One ball, one strike to count. There's the panoramic look at this old ballpark. Cubs moved in here, 1916. It was built actually for a, another league, a third major league that was in existence only a couple of years, the Federal League. So, Joe, this is actually the last Federal League ballpark in existence. And the oldest in the National League. And we hope that uh, 50 years from now we can still say the same thing <laughs> because it's a great place to come. But the fans here, we usually refer to this as the friendly confines, 
are on edge right now. No score, fifth inning. Okay. And foul, and we go out of play in the third base side. One ball and two strike. The wind blowing in from right and blew that one all the way back into the upper deck. Sometimes as a manager you think about a couple of things in this situation first you say well I've got Javier at first but if Aurelia doesn't hit in a double play Barry Bonds is going to be able to hit in this inning if I get Javier thrown out trying to steal or hit and run and he swings and misses Barry has to lead off the next inning and you want Barry to hit with runners on if you can so so that, I mean that's something you think about I still think that you have to be aggressive but you know, those are things you have to think about in the dirt and blocked by Houston. But Javier was not going anywhere. Two balls, two strikes. One out, one on. Well, this is the count that Javier took off on back in the third inning. And actually had it stolen, but the pitch had been called strike three to Aurelia. So are you predicting he's going again? I'm just for the oh. benefit of our viewers Joe okay. so that they <laughs> might make an informed prediction pointing that out all right uh, he's got, he's running <laughs> two and two the count now really backing away is again Traxel and Houston are uh, having a, a pitch calling debating society here Traxel has not given up a hit Javier is back. Well, Jim Riggleman remembers that Javier ran in this count the last time. And surely he asked to, well, to, uh, Traxel to make that throw. Aurelia steps out again and looks down at Wotus and says, well, is he running or not? <laughs> and Aurelia really steps out. I mean, he stepped halfway over to the fungo circle that time. <laughs> two and two the count. Javier, rather short lead. He's running. High in the air in the right center field. The wind will knock that one down. Sosa. Two down and Barry Bonds coming up. Well, we've seen how Traxel has pitched Barry the first couple of times up. Two down. Javier at first. Man, you got a pitch to hit. Maybe a little bit up in the zone, but fastball out over the middle of the plate. I don't think you will see Javier run now. I don't think he will run unless Barry gets behind in the count, maybe gets two strikes or something. Then you might see him run. Bonds has been hot all September and hot this year at Wrigley Field. The Giants. Nothing. The Cubs nothing in the fifth. Javier at first. Nice pitch. Strike two call. That's another very important pitch. Now he's 0-2 as he throws pitch right on the outside corner. Now he's 0-2 and Barry knows that he has pitched him inside. And if you're Traxel, truthfully you should waste one inside. Just to remind him again. And we'll keep an eye on Javier now that the count has gone to two strikes on Bonds. And this is a time that, you know, with a guy like Barry up there, two strikes behind the count, you can go ahead and take off. So the entire crowd on its feet now with two strikes. Popped up. Foul. Gaetti's got room. The sign is retired. So Traxel has handled Bonds. Rodriguez, Gaetti, and Houston coming up. Still scoreless. From our family to yours, we want to encourage you to keep going. Keep protecting what's most important. Keep hopeful in the face of all this. Keep believing. Keep being strong. Keep supporting the people on the front line. Keep staying together while staying apart. Keep being fearless. And most of all, keep dreaming. American Family Insurance is mailing our personal auto insurance customers a premium relief payment to help them keep going. We'll keep being here when you need us. I'm Mike Zen, CEO of the University of Illinois Hospital and Clinics. To our doctors, nurses, and entire staff at UI Health, thank you. 
Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, your guidance and courage have been an inspiration. Our deepest gratitude is for your commitment to our patients. Your brave, selfless care exemplifies what makes us great. And Chicago, we are here for you. We will get through this together. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. A playoff for the right to win the National League wild card berth. The Giants nothing, the Cubs nothing as we move to the last of the fifth inning at Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Reverend Jesse Jackson here tonight. Stop by the booth to say hello to my partner, Joe Morgan. He is here to help Sammy Sosa collect things and collect funds for the relief effort in Sammy's home country, the Dominican Republic, ravaged by the Hurricane George. Here is uh, Henry Rodriguez. Uh, that curveball misses from Mark Gardner. One ball, no strikes. John, on Saturday night, Sammy Sosa, Jose Hernandez, and Henry and Henry Rodriguez went out and helped them load trucks. Outside. They were going to be sent over, you know, to help the people in the Dominican Republic. And they had the final game yesterday. They did that on Saturday night and played yesterday afternoon in their final road game of the season. Oh! 3-0 to Rodriguez. Gary Gaetti on deck. Well, uh, the Reverend Jackson said that if you'd like to support the Sammy Sosa Foundation, which is heading up this effort to send uh, relief items to the Dominican Republic, you can call Wrigley Field and they'll give you the information on how to do it. I had a feeling Rodriguez was taken all the way in that one, Joe. <laughs> Three and one the count. Well. I'm not so sure that he should have been. Right center field. Javier. Base hit. Good job by Javier to hold him to a single. Henry Rodriguez. It's the Cubs' third hit. Well, Rodriguez, along with Sammy Sosa, is really your power hitters on this ball club. And a lot of times you let a guy turn a guy loose three and oh he actually had a better hit three and oh than he did pitch the hit than he had three and one good job by Stan Javier to hold him to a single. Here's Gaetti. He grinded into a double play his first time. Strike on the outside. And one of the things you have to remember with Rodriguez he doesn't run that well so the fact that he's on first base. You know, to get a, if he would have gotten a walk, would not have been that big a deal. Snow on the bag with Rodriguez. The middle infield double play depth against Gaetti. Strike two on the inside, and he goes back to talk to Bruce Reming about it. We're at Wrigley Field, Chicago. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. The Giants and the Cubs in a playoff to determine which one will secure the wild card berth in the National League Division Series. The winner will go to Atlanta to face the Braves starting Wednesday. No score fifth inning. There's a high drive deep into left center. Bonds back at the wall. Goal! Two nothing Chicago.
John, as I said, this is a small ballpark. And if you hit the ball to left field, even with the wind blowing in, it will still go out. Gary Gaetti with his eighth home run as a Cub. In 126 at bats, he has just been a great presence in that lineup since coming over from the Cardinals. John, this is really just a mistake that you cannot make if you're a veteran pitcher on an 0-2 pitch. No ball and two strikes. You try to get him to chase something. But watch where this pitch is. Right in the middle of the plate. Bell tied. You cannot make a mistake like that with no balls and two strikes on you. And if you hit it well to left field, it will still go out here in Wrigley Field, even with the wind blowing in. And that goes around about six rows deep, and the Cubs have a two to nothing lead. And that's the look in the dugout as they saw it on its way. They were hoping, and then it landed in the bleachers. Some of that tension for the Cubs. They have scored first, and Mark Gardner, knowing he made a mistake. And that is uh, Gary Gaetti's wife. Cubs fans got excited and they had to clean up some of the debris in the outfield. So the ground screw out to uh, clean up the outfield. And the fans start to chant Gary and he comes up to take a bow. So the first big hit of the game. Comes from the Cubs for the 40 year old Gary Gaetti. Here's Tyler Houston. He hits a high fly ball, but that will stay in the ballpark. Stan Javier in left center. And that is the first out of the fifth inning. Well, not only did he hit, give up the home run, then Gardner had to, to wait around for two or three minutes while they cleaned up the outfield. Gary Gaetti with his 362nd career home run. Hit in Houston over the weekend, a two run double against the Astros. And he has been getting big hits. I mean, he just has been a tremendous addition to this club. Well, Gary has been in big game situations before with the Twins and third ball to Jose Hernandez for a strike. Okay, and he has uh, been through it all over the years. Just made a trade and just before the trading deadline with Texas acquiring young third baseman Fernando Tatis and they were out of the race anyway so they put Gaetti on the release waivers that's a swinging strike two two and two and which gave them ten days to either release him or or trade him and during that time the Cubs were able to secure him McPhail, the president, who of course had Gaetti when he was the general manager in Houston, in uh, Minnesota. Right? Three and two, the count. So Gary Gaetti, who homered in the first game he ever played at the Metrodome with the Twins, and now he homers the first time he's ever played in a tiebreaker playoff. And that is strike three call to the inside corner. Not number two. And Traxel, the pitcher coming up. Hasn't really been pretty for Traxel, but he's retired Barry Bonds three times consecutively. That's certainly been a key for him. I think he's actually really frustrated Bonds tonight. Strike one. Traxel's also a pretty good hitter. A 270 batting average, 17 hits in 63 at bats, three doubles, and a home run. 
Very good hitter. One ball, one strike. The Cubs have gone ahead two to nothing in the fifth inning. And the Giants, who had to play from behind these last ten days, now in this tiebreaker playoff have to play from behind. Two and one the count to Traxel. Two down, nobody on. Two runs in. The Cubs using their favorite weapon of the year, the home run. There it goes! Javier into shallow center. But two runs on the board for the Chicago Cubs. Jeff Kent, Joe Carter, and J.T. Snow coming up. Two to nothing, Cubs. Cubs two, Giants nothing. The late Harry Carey, they've often felt, has been somehow lingering over the proceedings in absentia. And that although Harry is not present in body, that he is in spirit. And uh, the Cubs are now leading with Harry hovering out there over Waveland Avenue. Two to nothing, Chicago. By the way, we had mentioned the story that Charlie Hayes of the Giants. Had not been able to contact his parents down in Mississippi, where Hurricane George, going through the Gulf Coast, he was very concerned about that, and he asked us to ask them to call the ballpark. If, in fact, they were watching, well, we have further word on that story. Here's Jeff Kent against Traxler, curveball for a strike. Apparently, they were not watching because they have no electricity in their home down there. But WDM Radio in Mississippi was watching they reached Charlie Hayes mom she reports that everyone is fine they just don't have any electricity right now it's a ball outside they called uh, WDAM in Mississippi then called uh, the ballpark here Bob Rose Giants publicity director took the call and called down to the clubhouse to tell Charlie Hayes that everybody's fine down there so Charlie you got to be resting a little bit easier now to know that yes that's out of play off to the right First, Joe and I, and all of us here at ESPN, send all of our prayers and best wishes to everybody down who has uh, been subjected to the ravages of Hurricane George. And if you've been able to tune in tonight, we're happy to play some small part, or maybe taking you away for just a brief time from the harsh reality down there. One ball, two strikes to Kent. Two and two, Kent. He said one right back to Traxel, and he's been hit by a pitch. Joe Carter on deck, and then J.T. Snow. Steve Traxel has walked five and hit a batter, but he is not allowed a hit. For the first time, he has a lead, two to nothing. Yes. Right to Morandini. Well, Jeff Kent takes a fastball away and he goes the other way, but he lines it right at the second baseman, Morandini, who was positioned perfectly. And now Joe Carter, who was lined out to right and walked. The outfielder ran toward left. Swing and a foul. Joe Carter went to Toronto. Part of that huge trade that was made there. Roberto Alomar and Carter went to Toronto. Fred McGriff and Tony Fernandez went to San Diego. Yes. Strike call to the outside. Two strikes to count. Well, those two runs have really helped Traxel. I mean, his fastball seems to have a little more life to it here in the sixth inning than it's had in the last two or three innings. One and two. Well, you know, I, I remember reading a, a quote after Al Leiter lost the ball game for the Mets on Saturday. Mets got shut out in Atlanta. And he said he really felt like the way they were struggling to get runs that he was going to have to be perfect, not allow them to score to win that game. 
and it affected the way he threw. That's a foul. He just barely got a piece of it. So now Traxler knows he can give up a run or two and be all right. Mark Gardner. I mean, he's pitched very well. He just made that one bad pitch. And I mean, 0 and 2, you would think, you know, he's got to try to get him to fish for something or try to get Guy Eddie to hit a ground ball, at least throw a sinker away or something. But I know the pitch wasn't exactly where he wanted it, but you have to miss off the plate, not in the middle. Oh, man, that curveball right there. But Carter tried to murder it, fouled it straight back. Well, Carter, you see, Carter gets a fastball. Well, it's a look of breaking ball. Actually, it hangs on the inside part of the plate, and he just missed it. One ball, two strikes to Carter. Steve Traxel out of uh, Long Beach State University. Yeah. The splitter for the strikeout. Six strikeouts for Traxel. Well, he made a bad pitch and he comes back with a good pitch. I mean, this splitter starts about knee high, and by the time it gets to the plate, it's in the dirt. Joe Carter with two strikes just about has had to he had to chase it. Good pitch there from Traxel. Two down, and here is JT Snow. He has walked and grounded at the first. We got him. A high pop fly. Easy play for Rodriguez. And Traxel for only the second time in the game retires the side in order. Top of the order, Johnson, Morandini, and Sammy Sosa coming up. 2-0 Cubs. Every week, tune in to Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster. This week, Ryan interviews former Cubs Derek Lee and Greg Maddox. Coming to Chicago was a, a huge deal for me. I really got a chance to be around people who kind of understood what type of hitter I was. Late, I had a 3-0 count in uh, Colorado, and I'm like, oh, shit, I got I to gotta make a pitch here. <laughs> Off the Mound, Sunday at 6 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. Every generation has its heroes who see past themselves and the risks and the fear to run toward the danger with courage and compassion. Touching lives, saving lives, changing us all. Every generation has its heroes, and you are ours. Advocate Aurora Health. America, your neighbor needs you. Let's help each other through the coronavirus crisis. Marquee Sports Network is partnering with the Salvation Army to deliver food, shelter, and hope in your community. Go to MarqueeSportsNetwork.com and click to make a donation to the Salvation Army, where all proceeds stay right here in your area to help your neighbors in need. Join Marquee Sports Network, the Salvation Army, and Sinclair Cares, your neighbor needs you campaign. We go to the last of the sixth inning from Wrigley Field. Lance Johnson. One ball, one strike to Lance, who has twice grounded a short. Morandini on deck, and then Sammy Sosa do up third in the inning. Two to nothing, the Cubs lead. Yeah. Base hit. And this is probably Mark Gardner's last inning if he can get through it without any problems because he's the third hitter for the Giants in the seventh inning. And there you see, I, that's what I, that's what that 40 ounce bat will do for you. You do not have to get all of the ball, you know, to hit a line drive. And Lance swings that bat well. If you're the Cubs here, I think you try to manufacture a run here. 
You want to send Lance? Well, either that or you have Martin Dini execute a hit and run, or you go ahead and bunt. Johnson with 10 steals this year. Morandini, excellent bunter, excellent hit and run man. Yeah. Down the left field line. Bonds a long run. Gets there. Nice play by the Gold Glove outfielder. And back to first goes Johnson. And here comes Sammy Sosa. Out beyond the left field wall on Wayland Avenue. They put up the police barriers out there. But a huge crowd of folks hoping to perhaps get a hold of number 67. Sosa stands in. He has on a check swing bounced into a double play. And he has also struck out. Johnson back to the bag at first. Sosa with four home runs lifetime against Gardner. He also has hit four against Oral Hershiser of the Giants. But has not hit more than four against anybody. That looked like Swinging for number 67. Well, this pitch is up and out of the strike zone as we take a look at Rodriguez and Johnstone in the, in the Giants bullpen. Sosa back out of the box trying to gather his thoughts. Now he's back in there. And Johnson back to the bag at first. The outfield very deep and around toward left for the Giants. Well, Sosa has hit a lot of his home runs this year to right and right center. Tonight, the wind blowing in from right. Everybody on their feet. Yeah. Base hit. Katz is going to try for third. Good hustle by Johnson. Javier seemed to fall down and didn't get much on the throw, but Johnson forced the action. That's the aggressive type play that you want. And and last Johnson made it. But this is also the Sammy Sosa of 1998. He will cut down on his swing and hit the ball back through the middle. Mark Gardner backing up the play at third base as uh, Dusty Baker heads out to the mound now and Mark Gardner is finished. Well if you're the Giants you cannot afford to fall any farther behind and he wants a left hander here to try to get Mark Grace out. Two lefties coming up Grace and Rodriguez runners at first and third one out the Cubs already leading two nothing. Now Rich Rodriguez the veteran left handed has come on to face Mark Grace and he has not had a lot of success against Mark Grace. Grace is five for nine against Rodriguez with one home run. Lance Johnson at third base. Sammy Sosa at first snow on the bag with it. Grace, there you see his numbers, as Joe mentioned, against Rodriguez. Grace in this game is single to right and fouled out to third. Big spot of the game, the chance for the Cubs with their cleanup hitter up there to extend their lead. So, so back at first. Sammy led the club this year with 18 steals. They don't run a whole lot. Only 64 steals for the whole team all year. They've hit more home runs though than any Cubs team in history. Two and oh. Kind of interesting the way 
Mark Grace kind of decoys a lot of pitchers. Pitches away, kind of walks across the plate, which tells him that maybe you can come inside on him, but he protects inside first. You see him kind of walk across the plate on those first two pitches. If you're the catcher of the pitcher, you say, well, I should bust him inside, but he actually wants that. I'm not so sure that he won't be swinging on this particular pitch. I mean, Mark Grace and Sammy Sosa are your big guys, especially RBI men and, and, and your best hitters. 3 0, oh, you can let him take a hat. He's disciplined enough to know that he has to get a good pitch that he can drive. And that was one that he could drive, but he chose not to swing at it. 3 and 1. Grace looking over Tom Gamboa. The third base coach. Relaying the sign for that man, manager Jim Riggleman. The middle infield double play depth. Sosa's running. Ball four. That was a good, smart play, I think, by the Cubs there to go ahead and run Sammy Sosa because Mark Grace will put the ball in play if it's a strike. And you open up a hole for him on the left side, especially because he's not going to pull a lot of left handed pitchers. But if he does pull it, you still have the hole open at first base. So I think that was a perfect hit and run situation there for Riggleman. Now, instead of Henry Rodriguez, there is Matt Miski to come out and act as a pinch hitter. Dusty Baker has a right hander up in his bullpen, but also remember that Jim Riggleman's got two outstanding left handed hitters. Still on his bench, Orlando Merced and Brant Brown. So, Henry Rodriguez packing his gear. Well, John, they, Glenn Allen Hill hit a pinch hit, grand slam home run against the Giants earlier this year. Right here at Wrigley Field. Yeah, in this situation, a pinch hit. And and Allen Hill hit a home run, a grand slam. But they choose to use Matt Mitski. I think he doesn't want to fire all his big lumber this early in the ball game. Johnson at third, Sosa at second, and Grace at first. One out. It comes ahead 2 nothing. 